is that this is a competitive worker placement game and it can feel quite cutthroat, although it's not absolutely terrible like in a take that sort of way. Instead, players are just going to be fighting over different locations, but that does introduce some of the elegance and interesting mechanisms in this game. Because in this game, there's going to be a whole bunch of different locations out on the board, and players are going to be placing their knights on those locations in order to take the associated action. A really cool feature about this game is that the more powerful knights are actually made with larger tokens, so you can quite easily see who has the most power in a location at any given moment. But whenever it's your turn, you're going to be putting one of these tokens out on the board. But the cool thing is that when it moves on to the next person's turn, if they want the location that you just put one of your workers at, they can actually put a stronger knight there, kicking your meeple back to you and forcing you to put it somewhere else on the board. So you can kind of see the cutthroat aspect here, but it isn't completely terrible because you do get to redistribute your knights that were kicked out back to somewhere else on the board, even though it may not have been your number one choice. But if you do absolutely want that location, you could try to take it back Back by putting a more powerful knight there than what you're kicked off by, or you can also reinforce your knights with these little white meeples that are known as squires. Each of these squires will increase your strength by one, but the interesting thing here is that you want to put enough squires that you think you have secured your position, but you don't want to put any more than that because any squires that you use are discarded after you use them, which means that you don't get them back with your knight. So if another player goes there and kicks you out, then you are not getting your squires back and you have essentially just wasted those squires. Once all the players have successfully put all of their knight tokens out on the board, then you're going to be resolving all the different locations, and each location is going to have a different ability, but it's also going to have a different guest token that you can take onto your own personal player board, which I will come back to in a moment here. For any location that you currently occupy, you're going to be choosing to either take that guest token or perform the action, or if you do have the money, you can pay to do both. The different actions can allow you to gain new knights, upgrade your knights, gain additional money, or even build up your castle, which can gain you ongoing benefits throughout the game. And I guess before I get too far ahead of myself, there are a few other different spots that you can choose to put your knights if you don't want to put them out on the main board. You can put them on your own personal player board at your castle, either in the unbuilt parts or the built parts in order to gain the associated benefits. Or you can also send your knights out to these different battles because there's going to be some randomized battle cards out on the board with a certain amount of strength that all the knights need to add up to in order to defeat that battle. And then players are going to be getting victory points based on the proportion of strength that they added there. Another nice thing about going to these battles is that you'll also be able to instantly take a action tile gaining you with an instant benefit anytime they decide to spend that tile. But the very last thing that happens before any of these action locations resolve is that players are all going to have a vote on a law to be passed that's going to be affecting some of the mechanisms in the game and some of the available actions to the players. There's always going to be three laws in play, but there's also going to be three more potential laws that players are going to be voting on in order to put one of those into play and then kicking out one that is already in play. Players will be voting on the law that they want to enact, but they can also increase their vote by spending some of their tokens that they have acquired from those various guests. Each guest that you gain is going to be adding a voting cube to your supply that you'll be able to spend any time that you perform one of these votes. The game continues like this for five rounds, and then the player with the most victory points at the end of those rounds wins the game. And if you are interested in this or any other games offered in this campaign, I will have them linked in the description below.